As an AWS enterprise strategist, I help organizations around the world adopt AWS Cloud as expediently as possible. And typically, I talk about people, process, and technology with these enterprises. And the process and the technology are actually pretty straightforward. It nearly always comes back to the people element. How are we going to reskill our engineers, our developers, our leaders as quickly as possible to really benefit from the cloud advantage as quickly as possible? And it's actually the human element that can be affected by cloud migration. Adoption decisions can affect experts who for many years have operated on-premise data centers and developers in the same way. And it's perfectly natural to actually be afraid of that. As humans, we tend to fear the unknown. So what's the choice for leaders? Do you hire new or train existing? Well, hiring new can take months, if not years. So train existing is the right way forward. But actually, training is typically just the tip of the iceberg. If we look at actually what motivates us as humans, it's really just three things. Autonomy, mastery, and purpose. Autonomy. We'd like to actually do our jobs how we want to do them, to schedule it in with everything else going on in our lives. And mastery, we want to be really good at what we do. And purpose, we want to make sure what we do really has a positive impact. And it's these three things that actually come together. And often with any sort of transformation, and cloud could be included in that, we're actually changing those three things. So with the benefit of hindsight from my own journey and working with hundreds of enterprises around the world, there's actually 12 steps which I've seen work time and time again to really reskill everybody who wants to work with cloud and become an expert. Now, step one is acceptance. Sometimes on a journey to cloud, it can feel a little bit like a roller coaster. There's lots of highs, there's a few lows, there's a few twists and turns. But actually, as leaders, it's really important to remember the change curve that we are on. The phases of you know, denial, frustration, depression through to actually experimenting with these new tools, this new way of developing applications, through to accepting and then really rapidly gaining massive benefits. And it's really important to remember everybody has a different length of change curve. My change curve is really short, some people have much longer. And it's really important that we really think about these change curves in everybody. Secondly, training. AWS has a large number of excellent training courses. I think the Technical Essentials course is a great place to start, really bedding in with 11 of the fundamental basic tools you need to learn to use to really get the most out of AWS Cloud. Step three, safe hands-on time. We have this saying in Amazon, there is no compression algorithm for experience. And what that really means is you need to let people experiment, play, and use AWS. So give them a Sandbox account. This is an account that's never going to host production. We can set a billing alarm in there with an appropriate amount of money and let people really use the tools, understand how to use these new APIs to build powerful, deliverable elements for their customers. Now, step four. One of the very best ways we've seen of companies not only reskilling but actually running their enterprise systems is to create what we call a two-pizza team in Amazon. We call it a two-pizza team because this roughly means people of around about six to 12 that can be comfortably fed by two pizzas. And when you put your first team together, really it's important to put a number of different things into that first team. Often this can be called your center of excellence. So putting a product manager in there, somebody who has the right balance between understanding the cloud and what needs to get done to enable the right outcome. Then placing in there an architect, somebody who has a holistic view of how all the systems are put together can be incredibly useful. And then actually putting in infrastructure engineers, potentially infrastructure engineers who have previously predominantly worked with on-premise systems. Typically, they have a really good understanding of IP addressing, DNS, Active Directory, Identity Access Management, these core elements that actually still exist when you operate with VPCs, but in the cloud. So put infrastructure engineers into the team. Then, of course, security is job zero for us all. So allocate a security engineer to work in this first team. This individual can help the team achieve the security objectives which are appropriate for you. And operations engineers, 
Typically, these engineers have a really good understanding of patching, maintenance, and tooling for the enterprise. And again, you're almost certainly still going to want to maintain some of that when you move over to use AWS, especially as you look to automate as much as possible and leverage DevOps practices. And then, of course, putting in your application engineers into your team, those engineers and developers that are used to working with the data and logic constructs, and having this team operate and get the first workload onto cloud. And of course, giving them the training and sandbox access before you do this are critical steps. Step five, bring in experts. It's really at this stage that typically you have a lot of positive intent. You're probably having a lot of success as well. But really, to make sure that engineers and developers in this team go through that change curve, and go from no expertise to experts is really crucial. And at this phase, bringing in an expert partner or AWS ProServe can really help. On my own journey when I went through this, I actually worked closely with CloudReach, and they were able to help me bring in an engineer into the team. And when you do this, they're actually able to do pair programming with all the individuals in the team. Now, pair programming is a concept from extreme programming, which fundamentally means having one machine, two mice, two keyboards, two monitors, and two individuals working together on that machine to develop infrastructure as code. This is a fantastic way to go through the learning curve and reinforce what was learned on the training course and what was practiced in that sandbox account. And this expert can work with all members of the team even working entirely with them for maybe one or two days to make sure they all go through that change curve. Step six, make it real. Ship something important that matters to your business partners and to your business. This is a great way of going through and testing and building those, that muscle memory that you need to get to production. It should normally take from about up to 12 weeks to get something live into production. If it's taking longer than 12 weeks, something's not working well. Go back and revisit. Step seven. Now, it's okay to have one team, but what if you want to have tens or hundreds of teams? Well, the very best way of now moving forward is to actually take this first team and split them into two. So if you had a team of 12, split them into two sixes. Bring in more folks that you want to go through that change curve. Bring in extra resource from your partner or from AWS ProServe. And again, go through the same process. Get them onto the training course if they've not been on it. Ensure they have sandbox access. Get them pair programming and get them shipping something into production. Step eight. Now it's normally at this time, as teams are having success on the cloud, that you really start to notice a difference between those engineers and developers that have actually started down the path to AWS certification and those that potentially haven't yet. In particular, if you take a look at, for example, the AWS Associate Architect exam, a significant portion of that exam is dedicated to security and operational efficiency. So encouraging your engineers and developers to get certified is a great mechanism. And again, we've talked about classroom training, but another resource is potentially using a cloud guru. They're an advanced partner, now available in the AWS Marketplace, got some really good videos to, again, help engineers and developers learn how they want to learn. And step nine, and a really crucial step, really your goal as leaders is to hopefully get to 10% of your actual technology uh, employees certified. So why 10%? Well, on the journey as a technologist, I actually found myself thinking like a psychologist of how to get to a key mark. And actually, psychologists have known for many years that when just 10% of a population has a passionate belief about something, the majority will always adopt. So getting to this 10% of certified individuals is really crucial to then getting the hockey stick curve of adoption that you really want. And step 10 recognize this mastery in your engineers and developers. Really look at the different mechanisms that you can bring to bear to help that. You know, recognize them as the keynote. Have an internal roster of everybody who's passed the exam, who's passed what. Gamifying it can actually make it both fun and pretty competitive. And step 11, really as leaders, understanding the art of the possible in this new world and the potential it can bring to change your business positively for your customers can be really empowering. So take the challenge yourself. 
can you get AWS certified? I found it incredibly empowering for me to also take the exam when I was in a customer leadership role. And finally, step 12. At this point, when you've scaled your teams out, it's probably a good idea to take a look at your job families and really understand, are they now appropriate now I'm operating in this small team model, or is there a better way? So there you have it, 12 really straightforward to follow steps that can really have transformational results for your organization as you get set up to succeed with cloud. Thank you.